All right, just got finished training. Um, I needed to uh, figure I would give you a video, uh, uh, answer a question uh, before I took off. Hopefully I'm in the camera. Don't even know if I'm in the camera. I, I don't do a lot of rehearsing. I don't do any rehearsing actually, but don't do a lot of setting up. Uh, so hopefully I'm in the camera. All right, so uh, this one is a question that might be, might sound simple to you, but I don't think it's very simple. Uh, because it's going to be somewhat uh, autobiographical, uh, and it's how to find the best teacher, okay? How to find the best teacher, okay? And again, I'm going to say, uh, reveal some things. In order to make my point, I'll be saying a few things um, that uh, you didn't know about me. I think it might be interesting. It might even shock you, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, how to find the best martial arts teacher. All right. Um, the criteria today for finding the best martial arts teacher is one that was not the criteria when I was coming up. The criteria today is not necessarily knowledge, but personality. And unfortunately, in the entertainment business, you see how I sat up because I think this is very important. In the entertainment business today, you don't even have to sing. If you're a singer, you don't really have to know how to sing. If you look a certain way, you sell millions of CDs or downloads, whatever it is today that people are buying, okay? Back when I was young, you had to be able to sing because you didn't have video. Today, the martial arts are the same thing. People are coming up with personalities, certain personalities, and based on one's personality, they get viewership. They get views and subscribers. That should not be the criteria that adults pick for them to train with. Now, I want to say this. There are some people who think that for a child, the personality is most important. When I was coming up, that wasn't most important either. Your parents did not pick you because you had a good personality to teach their children. Your parents, of course, didn't want you to be abusive. God forbid. But they wanted you to be a disciplinarian. Today, parents want you to be almost the opposite. Adults are worse. So listen up, people. What should matter when you pick someone is their knowledge. Their knowledge. Okay? That should be the most important thing to you. Their knowledge. Not whether or not they serve uh, tasty cakes and tea. All right? Or soda. Or whatever it is you drink. Right? Whatever, it is, whatever is popular, popular snack today. All right? The bottom line is it should be knowledge. That's what it should be. Not personality. Not a bubbly personality. I'm going to name three people, right, that bring out a lot of hypocrisy uh, when I talk about, when people talk about training and training with people. There's three people I'm going to mention, right, that I know most of you, most of you people who say you love the martial arts and you would love to have a, a great teacher and you would just be so loyal to a great teacher, there are three people I almost guarantee most of you would not be able to tolerate because you are so sensitive. And I'm talking about you men out there, you grown men, right? And I'm saying 18 and up, right? Because you are so sensitive and you're looking for a bubbly personality rather than knowledge. These three people I'm going to mention who are known to be um, not the easiest people to get along with. Two of them were really, were so difficult to get along with. Most of the people who talk about how bubbly they, are, they were and, and, you know, how, how, just how bubbly and easy to get along with are lying. And I know that because I'm almost 60 years old. And although I didn't know two of them personally, I saw them in interviews when they were alive. When they were alive, right? Uh, okay, minimal, uh, you get minimal editing. So I know what many people say about them, you know, being so kind and bubbly and so soft-spoken was a lie, okay? One of them is fairly soft-spoken, but does not tolerate a lot of nonsense, okay? And I'm going to mention these three people right now, okay? Hicks and Gracie, Bruce Lee, and Customato. Hicks and Gracie, Bruce Lee, and Customato. Those three individuals, I tell you, I tell you, most of you would not be able to train with them. Most of you would not be able to train with them. Okay? Let's look at Hicks and Gracie. You can look at Hicks and Gracie and see that he does not tolerate 
nonsense. Why is it, why is it that Hicks and Gracie is not seen as being as affable or, or as, as bubbly as the other Gracies? Why? You can look at him and tell. You can look at him and tell that he is a strict disciplinarian. You can look at Hickson and tell. How many black belts does Hickson have? Right? How many? I mean, yeah, a lot of people train with him because he's Hickson. But when you really look at how great he is, right, the Mike Tyson of the Gracies, right, when you look at him other than Holes Gracie, Hickson is the best. Had Holes been living, has Hole, had Holes survived uh, to, today, he would have been the better Gracie. I have no doubt about that whatsoever, right? But the bottom line is, though, is that look at Hickson. Most of you would not be able to train with Hickson because there's a certain personality that you as grown adults shamefully need in order for you to go in and train every day. Let's look at Bruce Lee. Many people, they don't want to say anything bad about Bruce Lee. There's not a whole lot bad to say about Bruce Lee. But look at an interview with Bruce Lee. Look at any interview with Bruce Lee, and what you see is that Bruce Lee was one of the most egotistical people you have ever seen. You can look at Bruce Lee and tell by the way he has his head up like this, by the way he talks, by the way he postures. You can tell. I mean, he postured like Mussolini. Now, I know he wasn't Mussolini. I mean, he hated racism. The guy was deep. His major was philosophy. Right? Just like mine was. Right? The guy was a deep guy and a decent guy, way ahead of his time. Why? Because two of his first students were not only Western, but were black. But were black. He hated racism. I mean, the guy was a decent guy. The bottom line, though, is that he had a very big ego. Most of you people would never have been able to deal with Bruce Lee. You would never have been able to deal with Bruce Lee. Oh, I know how great he is. How many people say he was really great in his attitude? How many people say he was really nice in his attitude, in his character? Oh, he was a great fighter. But how many say he was really great in his attitude and in his character? Very few people tell you that. Very few people say that. Very egotistical. Very much so. Most of you people would not ever have trained with Bruce Lee in spite of his knowledge, in spite of his vast amount of knowledge, in spite of him being so far ahead of his time, it's mind-boggling, right? And I can say this about Bruce Lee. Why? Because Bruce Lee, when Bruce Lee was alive, I was training. So it wasn't like, okay, I looked at Bruce Lee as some idol. The people who trained me were on a cover of magazines when Bruce Lee was being interviewed. This is honest God truth. I started training when I was nine, when I was nine years old, 1970. So I am telling you that there are people, my teachers, my two karate teachers, my two main karate teachers were on a cover of magazines that Bruce Lee was being interviewed in when Bruce Lee was alive. So I never idolized Bruce Lee. There were other people that I knew personally who I looked up to and they were my, my teachers. I saw what they did. But the bottom line is I happen to know that Bruce Lee, yes, was a great martial artist. He was very far ahead of his time. And yet most of you people would not have tolerated him because what you need today is a beautiful, bubbly personality. The next one, custom model. I happen to know more about Custom Model than most of you people. And I will tell you that a lot of people telling you how bubbly he was and he was this and he was that. Most of you people are lying. Most of those people are lying to you. They're lying to you. And I understand they're trying to keep a legacy. And they should keep a legacy. They should not speak ill of people. And I'm not speaking ill of these people. But Custom Model did not joke around, baby. Custom Model was no joke. He was a strict disciplinarian. Most of you people would not have trained with Custom Auto. You would not have trained with Custom Auto. Sure, he wants the best for you. Sure, Bruce Lee wanted the best for you. Sure, Hickson wants the best for you. But that would not have been enough for most of you people. Because you want to be spoken to in a certain way. Of course, you don't want to be swore at. You don't want to be, you know, cursed at. I understand that. You don't want to be smacked around. I understand it. But it's the tea and crimpets that you want. It's the cupcakes and the tasty cakes that you grown men need before you actually train and pay your money. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. The criteria for a good teacher should be their knowledge. Should be their knowledge. Are they willing to give you everything they have? 
Are they willing to open up the treasure chest and throw everything at you and make you the best fighter you can be to be able to protect yourself as best as you can, as best, as best as you can possibly protect yourself? That should be the criteria, and it's not the criteria today. It's not. It is not the criteria today. You can look at the videos. Look at the most popular videos. The most popular people, the most popular videos are people who say, hey guys, it's me. Hi guys. Hi. I just came back from Thailand. Hi guys. I just, I have a friend with me and I just want to show you what this friend is like. And he's just a black belt in Taekwondo. I know he kicks so high. This, you know, these are the kind of people who you subscribe to. Why? Because like a little schoolgirl, you so-called men, you males, you demand a personality. Hi guys, hi, it's me. And you just click thumbs up, uh, thumbs up, uh, thumbs up, uh, thumbs up, uh, thumbs up. Oh, I like, I like, I like, I like. That's you. But somebody who says, listen, man, don't lay on your back, man. You'll get stomped on your back, man. Don't do that, man. You know, don't do, don't throw a lot of head kicks, man. Okay, don't do a lot of head kicks. Uh, what? I spent all this money on BJJ. He's going to say don't lay on your back. My mother took me to Taekwondo school, and, and he's going to tell me don't throw high kicks. And maybe much, much as I do that Philly show, he's going to tell me don't use the Philly show against a straight razor. Right? And thumbs down. Because you want, you want to be lied to and you want a personality. Next. Next. You need to understand this. There are teachers that are so good, that have so much knowledge, that talking to them for 10 minutes is worth more than taking two hours of classes, physical classes with other people. Talking to them, talking to them about boxing, about the psyche of the fighter. Look at Hicks and Gracie. If I saw Hicks and Gracie, I wouldn't want to learn no Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from Hicks and Gracie. I don't want to learn Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from Hicks and Gracie. I want to talk to him about his fights, man. What goes through your mind, man? When you was fighting bare knuckle guys that weighed almost 100 pounds and had more than you. And Raleigh Hudo, whatever however you pronounce it, what was going through your mind, man? How did you stay calm, man? On the bottom, man. That's what you want to ask Hickson. That's what you want to ask him more than taking any lesson and learning something that he don't even support, like the Alma Plata or something like that. That's the facts. A good and great teacher can talk to you for 10 minutes and it's, it matters more. You learn more than if you were training with somebody in a physical sense and for 30 days. But you won't do it because it's a certain personality that you need. You need them to greet, greet you at the door. Hi, guys. And what is your name? Oh, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? I'm so glad to meet you. I'm so blessed that you're coming in here and spending your $120 a month. I don't know what I would do without you. That's what you need. And that should never be the criteria. It should be knowledge. The greatest fighters in the world, if they were alive today, most of you people would not train with them because you don't like their personality. Next. You have obligations as a student, and it's important that you understand your obligations as a student. I have people who have come to me and want to train with me, and I knew sooner or later they were going to drop out. And you know when I knew they, when they were going to drop out? I knew when they were going to drop out because they would come to me and tell me who they met. I met this guy, and he said that he knows about this. I met this guy, and he said he knows about that. I met this guy, not that they put the gloves on. But they will come in and tell them all kinds of stories. If they saw them in the street, if they saw them in the store, if they saw them on YouTube, they will start to ask me a whole lot of questions. You ever hear so-and-so? I saw them on YouTube. You ever hear so-and-so? I saw them at the store. You ever hear about so-and-so? I saw them at the library. You ever hear about so-and-so? I saw them here. I saw them there. He said that this is that. He said this and this. And you know once they say that, they're on their way out. They're not coming back. Why? Because of bells and whistles, man. Bells and whistles. 
The more exotic the technique, the more things people say they know, the more likely your students are of getting up and taking off. You have an obligation to your teacher. If you do your studying and you walk in and you find a teacher that's going to give you every single thing he has and not hold anything back, then you need to give him the benefit of doubt. And every time somebody walks into your store or walks in and sees you somewhere or sees or you see somebody on YouTube or you see somebody at the bus stop, every time somebody says something to you, it should not be that you are so enamored like a little schoolgirl that you're thinking about breaking camp. You have an obligation as a student for you to strategically pick the people that you want to train with and when you want to train with them you give them uh, your undivided attention. You have a choice. Do your research. But when your research is done, you need to control your impulses and understand the key to learning. The key to learning is for you to do things over and over and over and over again until it becomes, until it becomes part of your muscle memory. And it should not be that it has to be exotic. It should not be that you have to learn something every day. That is not how boxers get good. Boxers get good by doing the same six to eight punches all of their freaking life until they may get to be world championships, may get to be all-time greats. Floyd Mayweather, I've said this before, people, Floyd Mayweather knows the same punches that somebody knows that somebody's taught in the first six months of their boxing. Marvin Hagler knew the same punches that someone's taught the first six months of boxing. Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, Manny Pacquiao, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, Every single great fighter knows the same six or eight punches as someone who has been boxing for six months. But they do not get tired of throwing those punches. They do not get tired of training with someone who tells them to throw those same punches. Because it comes down to this. Training a great fighter is a work of art, a work of art but it's not a painting. It is not a painting, it is a sculptor. You train a great fighter not by putting on more paint but by starting with a block of wood or a block of clay and whittling away and whittling away and taking away to the point where you end up with a form, you end up with a work of art. Is it a work of art to build a fighter? Yes, but it is not a painting, it is a sculptor. Lastly, When I say you have an obligation to be a good student, I am sincere about this. You have an obligation to be a good student. When you do your research and you pick someone, you should pick individuals only after you've done your research. But after you've done your research, you need to realize what it is that makes you a good fighter. What it is that allows you to be able to protect yourself. It is repetition. If you cannot tolerate repetition, then you are not going to be a good student, you're not going to be a good fighter, and yes, you may learn a whole lot of things, but the bottom line is, you will be lying to yourself when it comes down to how well you can use them. I want to share something with you people to let you know how serious I am about even being a student, and I'll wrap this video up with that. All of my life, I want to train with two particular karate instructors, just two. And the reason is because one was the, one of the greatest full contact bare knuckle champions the United States has ever seen. He was a U.S. national karate champion, but, that, but before that he was a full contact bare knuckle champion. And I had to travel two hours, two hours by public transportation train with him, two hours, public transportation to train with him, two hours. And I finally was able to train with him, finally. And I found him. And when I found him and I was able to train with him, I'm gonna tell you how old I was. I was 45 years old. 45, four or five, five years away from 50, right? I was 45 years old when I found one of the greatest full contact, excuse me, bare knuckle fighters ever born in the United States. He was fighting during the 70s. One of the greatest bare knuckle fighters ever. I found him when I was 45 years old. 45. I was already a black belt. I had already wrestled high school and junior college. I had already boxed. I had already trained in Kali and Wing Chun and Muay Thai and Kyokushin Karate and Shotokan Karate and Goju Ryo and Judo. 
I had already done those things, but I found him at 45 and started training with him at 45. I traveled by public transportation. We have one vehicle. It's, it's a new vehicle. It's a new SUV. I always have new SUVs or whatever, but we have one vehicle, me and my wife, and I'd rather her have it, and I take public transportation. I traveled public transportation for two hours each way on Sunday. Two hours each way on Sunday to train with him when I was 45 years old. The other full contact uh, icon was a teacher of full contact fighters, the greatest teacher of full contact karate fighters to the face, full contact karate fighters in the United States, who no longer even teaches. But I wanted to train with him, but I couldn't find him. I couldn't find him, I found him. And when I found him, I started training with him. Five days a week for two hours, five days a week for two hours. You know how old I was, people? I was 47. I was 47. I'm 58 now. I was 47, 47, almost 50 years old when I found one of the greatest full contact karate teachers of all time. He wasn't even teaching anymore. I saw him in the street and I hunted him down. I said, man, you got to teach me. I've been looking for you for 35 years. You got to teach me. And I trained with him five days a week, two hours a day, full time, family, job, other things, five days a week, two hours a day, every morning. I was 47 years old. Honest to God truth, I did not walk in and tell him, did you know someone? I saw this. This guy said that. That guy said this. Why? Because I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I searched for them. I found them. Then I shut up and I learned from them. So how to find a good teacher? You find a teacher based on his knowledge, not based on his personality. Second, you need to be a good student. You need to be worthy of having great teachers. And you're worthy of having great teachers when you find them, you settle down and you learn what it is they want to teach you and shut up about who you know, what you saw. Give them enough respect to where they don't have to hear that. That's what matters. You have obligations as a student, just like your teacher has obligations as a teacher. If you want to look for a teacher, look for one who has knowledge. Let that be your criteria. Let him, let him teach you, let him mold you, let him show you. And when you get in that school, when you get in that dojo, when you get on that mat, you give him the respect he deserves. My name is Sayyid Carmen, Uma Fight Camp. See you next video.